Hi, this is Jeff at Slavens Racing. This video is about piston to cylinder clearance, how to measure it, and about ring end gap. Um, <clears throat> so what is piston to cylinder clearance all about? Well, obviously the, piston, the hole here has to be a little bit bigger than the piston or the piston can't go up and down. And so what is that optimum clearance? Well, that's determined by the manufacturers. And for this size of a bore, on this style of a cylinder with a Nicosil coating, uh, I didn't look it up on this, but I'm sure, pretty sure it's probably around 1.2 to 1.5 thousandths would be on a brand new fresh cylinder with probably up to 3 thousandths being their tolerance. You know, you can, they can actually go bigger than that through, I mean, 4 or 5, but that's getting, starting to get pretty loose. And once, when pistons get loose, then that's when you get cracked pistons. You know, they'll, they'll crack up the skirt and break a chunk off and blow those pieces in the bottom and sometimes take the rod out with it. So you don't want to let them get to that point. So, uh, and, and why we have clearances, different clearances for different types of engines is because of how they're built. I mean, this is aluminum and this is aluminum, but they're different types of aluminum and they're different thicknesses, and so they swell, they expand at different rates. So when the engine heats up, this expands, and, and the piston expands. And uh, they, they calculate those rates and figure out what it's going to take to keep the engine alive. And so the clearances I mentioned before are pretty typical of a cast piston, which is what this is, with a forged piston, like a Wassner or a Weisco then the, the clearances need to be larger because they are denser and they swell more. They expand more. So how do we measure that clearance? So if you're tearing your top end down and you've got 100 miles on your engine, or 100 hours, excuse me, on your engine, you think it's time to put a new piston kit in it, maybe you want to do some further checks besides just slapping in a piston. Well, what a lot of guys do in the garage that I don't agree with because it's really kind of a useless check. And that is, you know, take a feeler gauge, these long feeler gauges, and have both rings off of the piston, and then set the feeler gauge in and slide the piston down with the feeler gauge until you get the piston down in the hole, and you kind of figure out what your clearance is. Well, that's really, really crude. It really doesn't tell you very much, especially if you've got a big clearance, because the bigger the clearance, the thicker the gauge you have to use, and the thicker the gauge, the less it bends and conforms. So the, the, the numbers get farther off. So I don't recommend that, although if, whatever if you want to do it. So another way to do it is with a telescopic gauge, which is what this is. They move in and out like this, and you typically put them in the cylinder at an angle, and then you lock this down here, and then you rotate it on in, pull it out, and measure it with micrometer. So then you would measure this gap with a micrometer, and you'd measure the piston with a micrometer, and subtract from one from the other, and that's your clearance. This is not quite as easy as it would seem. There's a certain amount of feel involved. You know, an experienced machinist can do it with no problem. That's another method to measure the piston to cylinder clearance. Um, then we have this device, which is made by Mitotoyo. And this is called a cylinder bore gauge. And its primary job is to measure a hole. And it comes with a, a number of different uh, spindles that go with it for different bore sizes. And you slide it down the cylinder the same way you do the other one at an angle. And then, you know, this gauge up here moves. And then you can move it up and down in the cylinder bore and watch the gauge to see the trueness of the cylinder. Bore. So what is trueness? Trueness is how straight it is and how round it is. So straight going up and down, round in the circle, obviously. So that's what you can do with this kind of a gauge, but I don't use them on two strokes because they're almost useless on a two stroke. Because a two stroke has so many holes in the cylinder, the ports, you can only measure a very small, you can only basically measure from the exhaust port up with this gauge. So it doesn't tell you enough. Um, also, two-stroke cylinders after, I don't know, we'll say 20, 30, 40 hours of, of use, they just get more and more untrue anyhow. I mean, 
uh, because of all the holes in them, you know, they're like a piece of Swiss cheese. They they warp easily and they get out of round and and, and not as straight as they should be. But they still run just fine when they're that way. So the quick and dirty method to do it at home is, and it's the one I use here all the time just because I've looked at so many cylinders, thousands of these cylinders, I can look at one and in seconds tell you whether it's in good shape or not. And so on one that has, we'll, we'll just use the 100 hours number because that's a pretty common time frame to tear one down, 100 to 150, 100 to 125 really. If you reach in here, and this is a brand, well, this has recently been recoded, so this one's perfect condition. But if you reach right in this top section here, about two millimeters down from the top, two or three millimeters, that is where the ring stops during its travel, so during its stroke. The ring doesn't come all the way to the very top, it comes just a few millimeters down. So it's going to wear up until that point, and then from there up is going to be untouched territory, so the wear is going to be below that section. So if you're reaching here and you feel a lip, that's wear. That's how much wear you have. And if you can feel a lip, it's not good. Now if you feel a big lip, it's bad. So that's kind of the make or break of it there. If there's a big lip, it needs to be replated. If there's a small lip, yeah, maybe you can get by. Also, you'd want to check the condition, other parts of the uh, cylinder board for condition, and, and typically where, they're, where they'll get damaged first, where the plating will come off first, is right above the exhaust port, and sometimes between the, the exhaust ports, because there's the main exhaust port and then there's the sub ports. And sometimes those bridges there will get damaged, they even get cracked. Uh, and, but uh, the severe wear will always be above the exhaust port. So those are some methods for measuring at home. Like I said, the down and dirty, quick and dirty way to do it. If it's got a lip, if it's a bad lip, I mean, of course, that's a judgment call. Then you've got a problem. Uh, at that point, you know, if there's no other bad spots in the cylinder, it's reusable. Yeah, you can stick a new piston in there and ride it. Buy ride it for the rest of the season and it'll be fine. Will it have the power that it should have? Will it be as good as a fresh one? Absolutely not. But you know, also you have to uh, consider your budget. To, to replay the cylinder is about $200. I use a company in uh, Fond du Lac, Wisconsin called U.S. Chrome. There's also another good company there called Millennium Technologies. But I've used U.S. Chrome for many years. They do excellent work. They come back looking like a brand new cylinder. And you just send it in with a new piston that you get at slavensracing.com. Preferably a Vertex, that's the best one to use for these cylinders. And they'll replate it and make it right, make it right back to new. It takes about three weeks to get that done typically. Uh, you might want to call them if you're going to send one in to see what their turnaround time is. They also have a rush fee for 50 bucks, where they'll kind of put you towards the front of the line and speed, you, speed up the process. But that's the way you do it. Um, I think that's about all there is for now. Ciao.